Thank you so much for that, Zoraida. That was great. Our next presenter is Rebecca Yanis. Rebecca is a junior at Stanford University majoring in mathematical and computational science. Rebecca received the class of 2013 HENAAC scholars as well as, scholar as sponsored by NASA Ames Research Center. During her freshman year, Rebecca was quick in making a presence at Stanford. She took on several leadership roles, including vice president of the Venezuelan Student Association, recruitment and membership director of SSCLES, and community coordinator of the Chicano Latino Orientation Committee and program coordinator for El Centro. Rebecca's superiors at El Centro were so incredibly impressed with her quality as a young professional and community leader in her, freshman, in her freshman year that they went on to hire her as program coordinator during her sophomore year, a role that was usually filled by juniors and seniors. Rebecca also co-founded Vensa at Stanford with the support of two peers. Rebecca embraces her heritage as a Latina and the opportunities it opens for her in the STEM world. She sees how inversely related the hard sciences are to the number of Latinas in the sciences. She takes this as an opportunity to stand out in her career and hopes for the day when it is normal for Hispanic women to pursue STEM careers. Please give a warm welcome to Rebecca Yanes. Rebecca. Thank you, it's so exciting to be here. It's really an honor to speak to you all. So hopefully I'm not the only one, but have you ever felt like you put in a lot of time and effort and you're not really seeing the results you want? I know I felt like that. So I'll tell you a little bit about that story. Um, my perception of that was actually changed a year and a half ago um, when I was elected to be the membership and recruitment director for one of Stanford's groups, Stanford Soul, the Society of Latino Engineers. Now, I hadn't been super involved in the group in my freshman and sophomore year, but I decided to join during my junior year um, and was elected because of my previous relationship with the Latino community on campus. The membership recruitment director isn't necessarily the most important job of the executive board, but definitely a necessary role. But in most things that in life, I tried to do, go above and beyond. And that meant when we needed food, I would volunteer to go pick it up. When someone needed to send an, out an email, I would do it. I was always on time to meetings, would stay, go, arrive early, stay late. Um, and I voiced my opinions and made myself heard. And it wasn't until about six months ago now when people started coming up to me saying, are you running for president? That I realized, huh, people noticed the work that I was putting in. I never really saw myself running for president, but because I think a lot of times we ourselves are our harshest critics, right? But at this point, I realize that the hard work really does get noticed by the people around you, which is why my perception about um, how a lot of times you don't see kind of the fruits of your labor coming out isn't really true because other people will see it. So now here I am standing before you as the president of Seoul. Like I said, Seoul is Society of Latino Engineers, and I'd love for, to talk about this group because it's something that has absolutely shaped my, my time at Stanford. So Seoul has been around for quite a long time. If you know SHIP or MISE, well, we've been around before them. So the Society of Latino Engineers has gone through many changes, including a name change recently. But it was founded on four pillars, and those four pillars remain today. The first, we are students, is academics. So that means that we host study nights, and we match upperclassmen with incoming freshmen to guide students into becoming uh, the best student they can be and decide what major they want to do and, and what's the best way to approach it. Another goal of Seoul is to make the highest quality Latino engineers possible. So that's why our second pillar is professionalism. We host workshops with corporate reps. We partner with the Career Development Center to make sure resumes are on point, interview skills are top notch, and that they can network with people like you. The third pillar is outreach. Most members, most of our members realize that we wouldn't be where we are today without the help of our friends, our family, mentors, counselors. So that is why we like to give back to the community by mentoring middle school and high school students in the area, inviting organizations onto campus for tours or panels or workshops, and just being that source of inspiration. 
our last pillar, familia, is where we have a little bit of fun. Um, we like to think of ourselves as friends and as a community. And in the past couple years, we focused on, on this pillar, and it's really paid off. The reason for that is because we realized that when there's a strong community of friends, the rest sort of just follows. So if we have people that are friendly and want to hang out, then they'll come to the academic events, they'll come to the professional workshops, and they'll do the outreach that needs to be done. So part of the reason I'm talking to you about soul is because I hope that in whatever stage of your life you're in, you have a soul familia like I do. So whether you're in high school, do you have that Latino engineering group at your school? If not, make one. If you're in college, undergrad or graduate students, join that group and be a leader in it and shape, that, shape the group for the future. And this even applies for professionals. I've been in companies where I've interned in the past where I saw a lack of Latino group. And I know that wherever I end up full time, if that group doesn't exist, I'll make it. So make that soul familia wherever you, wherever you are because it really is important to have that community because that's how we move forward as a group. Now, funny story about soul. I was elected president, called my parents, and said, Mom, Dad, I'm president of Seoul, the Society of Latino Engineers. And the first thing my dad says is, you're not an engineer. So let me clarify, Seoul is meant for STEM, as the Latinas Think Big Innovation Summit is. So I represent the M of STEM. My major at Stanford is Mathematical and Computational Science, which is a fancy name for applied math. And yeah, I don't know why Stanford calls it that, but applied math um, is, I think, a field that is absolutely growing but where Latinos are still yet to be heard. I think a lot of great work has been done with Latino, Latinos and Latinas in engineering, but if you look at the hard sciences of math and physics and chemistry, we're not there, and we need to be there. You saw that 11% earlier that Angelica showed at the very beginning. So what do I see with applied math? There's an objectivity in nature with numbers that you really can't find anywhere else. And decisions that are based off of numbers are more reliable and more impressive. And that's why I see math going so far. Now, I know you've all heard the term big data. Still not really sure what that means. I think of it more as overwhelming data because the amount of data out there is overwhelming. Just the other day, I was with my friend in the car. We were driving in a parking lot and a car pulled out and he slammed on the brakes. And he goes, oh, that's going on the record. I was like, what are you talking about? Apparently, his family is getting a discount on insurance so that they can put a chip in his car that counts the number of times he slams on his brakes. So sure, right now that might be giving him a discount, but in the near future, I'm sure some mathematical formula is coming up that is gonna charge insurance members different prices for that. So lots of things can happen when you're talking about math and numbers. And it's something that I've seen in my internship opportunities in the past. I worked at Safeway for a summer. Every time you swipe that membership card and pay something, Safeway knows about it, what time of the day you did it, when you did it, how many times you've done it. And that's why you're getting personalized coupons and all that fun stuff. So the reach of numbers to me is really almost endless at this point. But what I think is really cool is that different people, different organizations measure success in different ways. But the important part is that it can be measured. So where else can I see these measurements going? Take education, for example. Every student every year is given grades and GPAs and notes and standardized testing scores, but what's being done with that other than just seeing trends? I think that so much can be done in testing how one school teaches and another school teaches and comparing the actual results analytically and scientifically based. The same thing can happen with policy. Let's say one company tries one recruitment style and another company tries another. How does their numbers in Latino applicants differ? These are all things that can be measured, but they haven't been tapped into yet. And so that's where I see the future of numbers and math and overwhelmingly big data going. So I know we've heard a lot of fabulous people talk today about all the great things that they're doing. And just like I think numbers can kind of go into another space that hasn't been tapped into, I think everything you all can, are doing can also move similarly. So how is it that your job or your role, how can it go into another space that really will make a big impact and a big difference? 
I want to thank Angelica for inviting Stanford Society of Latino Engineers here today. And I want to thank you all for the constant support that you've given Latinas in STEM. It was really an honor to talk to you. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you to my mom for watching on Google Hangout. <laughs> um, and just I'm looking forward to talking with you all after and seeing where the conversations go. <laughs>